All right. What's going on, guys? Derek here. I'm bringing you another video. I know it's been a long time coming. Haven't had a video done in a couple months. When I said I was going to come back to my channel, but I couldn't before. I just didn't have the time. And honestly, I didn't have much of the motivation to do it, but now I'm kind of back to doing it. Because <laughs> uh, shout out to the Sydney Golf Team. Talk to you guys. You guys said you wanted to see these videos again. Uh, so I'm doing it for you guys. Hopefully, you know, if you guys continue to watch it, enjoy what I'm bringing to you guys and, you know, talk to some more Sydney people. Maybe we can get this thing going again and maybe a little bit better than it was before. Uh, I'm going to try to get these videos to be 10 minutes or less, just so that way I don't bore you guys too much with sport knowledge uh, or my sport opinions. I'll do my best to try and keep them as dim down as possible. Today I'm going to be talking more about Ohio State and their upcoming matchup with Penn State in Happy Valley this Saturday night. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about fantasy football. Uh, this channel is going to be consistently about, you know, big sports topics, some Ohio State, some Colts, maybe some fantasy football. If you guys want me to help you with that, uh, I'd be more than happy to take the time to sit down and kind of go through my personal favorites for uh, fantasy players, teams, that sort of thing. If you guys want to learn more about that or want some help from me or just want to kind of know how my fantasy lineup's going, uh, I'd be more than happy to help you guys with that. And speaking of fantasy, I'm going to make sure that I talk first about my fantasy team right now. Uh, just to start it off, kind of show you what I'm dealing with right now. Uh, I went through a auction draft with my friends this year. We're in an 18-team team. And, or 18 team league uh it's not your particular snake draft it's not the same snake draft where you can just pick the next best available player that you want you have to bid for players throughout the process anyone can bid on anybody so it is a more it's a difficult thing to do it really is and i'll just show you kind of what my fantasy lineup is looking like right now sorry as i fix this i just want to make sure that I put my tight end position filled up right now. Just give me a second there. Okay, sweet. So, first, the quarterback I chose was Aaron Rodgers. It was a good pick. You know, I spent a little bit too much money. We had $225. I spent around 60 on him. I know, it was a lot of money to spend on a quarterback. I know. But I really wanted to get him. I just couldn't help myself on that. Uh, I got Chris Thompson, my first running back off the board for me. Served me pretty well through these first couple weeks. You know, he's mainly your all-purpose back. He's not Adrian Peterson who gets most of the runs. He's going to get more of the stuff out of the backfield. That's where he gets – he's more, most valuable in a PPR league where he's catching a couple balls out of the backfield every day. So he's getting me some points. Last week did, only got me about six points, which isn't very good. But the first couple weeks he's been getting me like 20 each. So it's been really good. Ty Montgomery is my other running back. You know, I am I actually have Mark Ingram that I picked up, but he's suspended right now. I can't really do too much with him uh, until his suspension is done. But Ty Montgomery has served me pretty decently throughout the weeks. Uh, number one receiver, Adam Thielen. It was a good pickup. Spent a little money on him, you know, around 45 bucks. You know, it was a lot of money, but, you know, it, it, he's consistent. He gets good numbers each week. Uh, I had Josh Gordon, who served me really well in the first week because he had a touchdown, one reception for a touchdown, but ultimately, you know, he, he's in a situation with the Patriots. We'll see where he goes later on in the season. If he plays, then I'm definitely going to start him, but I have Mike Williams in as his replacement right now, who's done very well for me coming off the bench. Uh, got me like 20 something points last week. So it's very good. Tight ends, Jack Doyle. Not done very well with him recently because he's been getting hurt, but he's been getting me some points. I have Randall Cobb, good flex option. Uh, I had Landon Collins as my individual defensive player. That's what you can do in snake in uh, auction drafts. I got rid of him, put in Bobby Wagner. I have the Chargers defense as my number one option. Been kind of in and out on that one. And Adam Vinatieri is my kicker. And like I said, I have Mark Ingram and Josh Gordon on my bench right now. Andy Dalton as a backup quarterback. Frank Gore as a running back. 
the Bengals defense as a second defense and Tavon Austin. Again, this was a snake draft. It's an 18 team league. There's a, it's very hard to pick players in that sort of uh, facet. But then again, you know, my, I think I did pretty well with my team. You know, I'm two and one so far. It was very close to winning this last week. I almost was three and zero, oh, but I am top seven in my league right now because you know there's eight guys that are like two and one or three and zero. Oh. So you know we gotta wait till the season goes along. But as long as I finish in the top eight, I'll be in the playoffs for my season. Anyway, now we are switching topics to now Ohio State and Penn State. This is probably gonna be the most anticipated game of the year, one of them at least. Number four against number nine. Very difficult to predict. I did predict the score for last week's Ohio State. Almost did. Almost picked the score. I said 35-28 to 28 Ohio State over TCU. It ended up being 40-28. to 28. I was pretty close. I'm definitely going to watch that one. I want to make sure I know what I'm getting into. Let me pull up my thing here just to make sure I know where. Yeah, here we go. That way I can pull up the stats so I can talk a little bit about, about what's going on here. So the reason I'm picking Ohio State, I'm picking this one as a one-score game, 28-24. to 24. It's going to be a little bit lower scoring game because both defenses have gotten better over time. But I'm definitely picking Ohio State by one score. Ultimately, this is why. Even though Penn State has is the majority favorite from... ESPN. I don't I don't get it. But here's the thing. Trace McSorley and Dwayne Haskins have thrown roughly the same passes, 115 to 106, in favor of Haskins. Haskins has completed 87 per 87 of his passes. McSorley has completed 57. So McSorley is average is at about a around 60%, a little lower than 60% when it comes to completion percentage. Dwayne Haskins is throwing in the mid to upper 70s. Not to mention, uh, he has about almost 500 more passing yards. He has double the amount of touchdowns and has one less interception than McSorley. So Ohio State is in favor of the quarterback by a wide margin. Running backs, this Sanders fellow... That I've seen run, Ma the man is very good. Uh, I'm actually more worried about him than I am Trace McSorley because I saw the game against Illinois. He ran over people like it was nothing. And that's going to be the issue for Ohio State having to not just arm tackle. They have to learn to be able to make group tackles and tackle well. That's going to be the big issue. Offensive line, we have the best one. Receivers, we have the best ones. Running backs, it's about the same. You know, I mean, I think that, you know, we have two of them that are very, very good. They have one. But right now, I'd say it's very close. It Teeter-totter, either way. Defensive lines, I'm going to give the slight edge to Ohio State, even with the absence of Nick Bosa in this game, which is a very difficult piece for Ohio State. But the good thing is they've had two weeks to prepare not having him in. So that gives Jonathan Cooper a chance to actually get acquainted to the defensive end position because that's who's going to be replacing him. Him, along with Draymond Jones, who had a ginormous week last week against, or two weeks ago against TCU, and Chase Young, who's a potential top five pick in next year's draft. Uh, the linebackers have gotten a little better, but they're still not there. That's what concerns me about Ohio State's defense because I have no idea what they're going to do. The secondary has gotten better. I'd say they're roughly the same right now for both teams. I just think ultimately because Ohio State has the better overall offense, and if Ohio State can contain the ground game of Penn State from both Trace McSorley and Sanders, Ohio State's going to win this game. And it's going to be close because it's in Happy Valley. I can't stress that enough. But that's just ultimately what I think is going to happen. I think Ohio State... This is not going to be phased by the pressure. They've already faced TCU in Texas. They know how it feels. Dwayne Haskins doesn't fault under pressure. That's why I think it's going to happen that way. All right, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, again, if you guys want me to talk about any particular topics, be sure to leave me let me know. Leave a comment down below. Uh, I definitely would encourage you guys to like this video if you liked it or had enjoyed any of it. 
Uh, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and be sure to click the bell next to the subscribe button because apparently subscriptions mean nothing on YouTube anymore. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.